Well, it's over, guys. We're done for now. And what I'm referring to is the afterburner build. The guy's finally found his Ford EcoBoost donor and he wants his car back in his garage over the holidays so he can start dialing things in, get the engine planted, rear end, all that stuff. He wants to start working on that. So what we're gonna do is get as much of the metal work, the overall metal work done as possible, hopefully drop it on the ground and get it outside for you guys to see it as a whole before we blow it apart. Last time we did the structure and since that time I went ahead, did the front fascia, I'll show you in a second. Everything's been fixed in place here, so we were able to get all these cut lines established. This is a temporary brace just to hold things so we can open and close it without things flexing. We'll have to add a little more reinforcement inside. A-pillars for the windshield, done. And a lot of the interior stuff, you'll be noticed the beadwork in here. We've got all those panels finalized. Uh, driver's side, we haven't removed the buck yet. That'll hopefully get done today. We've got the roof sections, the sheet metal sections, all welded together. So once that buck goes away, we can lower the skin down on top. Now we are going to get the quarter panel, both quarters on, and joined up with the inner fenders. And we will probably scribe the roof sail panels to the quarters, roll the flanges up, and just mount it temporarily on some screws so we can take things apart. And we'll get the dash in, at least part of the dash, the main section. The instrumentation cluster, we're going to get that done later once he's figured all that stuff out. He will be using the cluster from the donor vehicle. Let's go around the car, I'll show you the front there, and then we'll get into that quarter panel, start rolling things around and try and get that finished up. There's the roof section all welded up, the internal flange there for the glass to sit on, that's all been established. See that? Came out quite nice. And there's the front fascia. A little bit of a scoop there on the front to funnel air into the uh, engine compartment just to keep the engine cool. We've got these side panels cut out, we're sitting on the box. So we'll get those pieces wheeled up and mocked up in place here to uh, kind of fill in the blanks. Roughed in this side here, you can see everything's been scribed. We have to cut it, fit everything together, weld it. Once we get this side done, we have to install the housing for the light over here, as well as a little channel we have to create to hold that uh, LED light strip, that quarter inch LED light strip that's gonna kind of create that bird's wing. What do you say we warm up our arms and do a bit of wheeling on this engine side? Okay, and you can see the panel basically supports itself. With this quarter panel, it's almost there. We have a couple screws that are holding it that's gonna separate later. Uh, they're gonna be joined here that joins up with the inner structure, so we need to trim some material away. Uh, we need to get rid of some of the material through here because this is just shooting on by. The thing is, we need to join this up with this rear top part here so that when we roll the flange, we have one continuous line all the way through. I don't wanna try joining a flange on a diagonal. It's not gonna line up like we wanted to. I've got everything marked and take it off and go through and weld it. Then we'll go ahead, roll that flange up, trim that, oh, we can trim that now, let's do that now. It'd be less weight to deal with when we start rolling that up. Okay, that's as close as we can get this while it's mounted on the buck. We'll have to go in with a dolly once a quarter panel comes off and just touch it up, but that ain't too bad. It rolled in nice. You can let that go. And it stays put. Guess what? I'm gonna go ahead and remove this back panel here. Actually, I'll show you how to fix those pinch bite marks from the shrinker stretcher on the other side and before we take this one off we'll get that one established and while I'm doing all that you can think about how we can pull this quarter panel off this top with both ends rolled around the buck. You can see these little bite marks from the kick shrinker. Uh, you can use a hammer and dolly to clean them up or you can take and very lightly pass it through your English wheel. Light pressure because you don't want to stretch out what you shrunk. And you see how I'm having a hard time right there? There, boom. Let's take it out. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Look at that. No more bite marks. Let's do this one. 
You don't want to pull the lower anvil into your finished surface. That would not be good. So now that we have all that smoothed out, we're going to take and flatten this out. It's not that I made a mistake, I'm just changing the look of the back a little bit. We're not going to have a chamfer coming into the tail light. It's going to roll around just like the driver's side. Too bad, created a bit of a rift there. Okay. See that? All gone. You see a little bit of a line there, but there's nothing there. It's it's flat. back and forth. Okay, and no more little chamfer. It's just going to be a roll. So let's get this clamped up on the buck and scrub the new line. Let me get it centered. Hold your tongue right and start pushing or pulling depending how your wheel is set up. First pass is always the trickiest. See, pulling. Good. I don't want to get too much sharper than this, this radius. We've got ourselves a dolly here. With a, kind of a radius of what I want, but we're going to try rolling without it see what happens. Worst case, you just back up, unroll it, redo it. I'm just going to back up that wrinkle there and we're going to hammer it into itself. I don't want the back of this dolly to imprint that, so that's why I got my hand between two surfaces. Okay, and we have a nice top surface, no hammer marks, no dolly marks, and telltale sign of the old crease that we had. If you take some 80 grit, that'll go away. Oh, yes. It's got to go up. Clamp it into place. These are flat pads, so the, the sheet can slide a little bit. There's not that much tension on it. Okay, it's fitting the wire frame perfectly. We're going by that. Little trick, when the Sharpie's still wet, you can wipe it off. Just don't touch your face with this finger. We're going by a center line here, so it's not arbitrary. It's like the final countdown. Line there, that doesn't matter there. And some witness lines. If we look from the top, we have our offset for the mesh that goes in over there. We've got our witness lines and we've got a cut line, scribe cut line here. And then the other thing, we've got this top quarter panel section in place. These are old marks. I've got new marks on the inside. So that's where we're going to have to take and roll that top section in. And at the front, we have the outline of the scoop. And all this material is gone. We had to cut it away. I'll kneel on that later. Now the only one thing I don't have outlined here is where this flange is going to roll up meet the roof. We're going to need the roof in place for that.
Okay, so I've got all the screws out of this quarter panel, and as you can see, we are stuck. Because I roll this over, it's stuck, you know, back is rolled over, it's firmly mounted to the buck is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes you're lucky enough to pry it off without damaging things. Sometimes you're not. And that's where these lovely channel lock pliers come in. Because the serrations, you can get in on the edge of the sheet metal and you can very carefully unroll it without chewing up this outside surface. You don't want to create a bunch of damage here. This has a nice roll to it. And it'll sometimes give you just enough of a start. I don't know if we can zoom in on that. See that moving right there? Just enough to open it up. I'm not going to use them because I can pop this off. Just like that. And when we go to snap it back on or when we go to remount the quarter panel, all we do is reverse the process and snap it back over the buck. If you have too much material that rolls over, it won't happen. So before we go any further, let's grab the passenger side piece, roll the back, roll the front, and that'll be ready and then we'll join this to the top sections there. Uh, right side, left side. See, all this wire frame has to go away, but not before we get the roof on one final time to create this flange. See this point? We're gonna have to cut that. So when our flange was sticking out straight, this was a straight line. By me rolling this around, our curvature has now returned. Okay, let's do the front edge. I'm not rolling the whole thing over at one time, just working it over slowly. All right. So we can take some lack of all the sun as well as my camera battery set many hours ago. In that time though, I've taken and welded up these quarter panels. This is the driver's side one. Got the top and sides areas joined up. Got the ends rolled in. That's all done. As well as the scoop opening. I need to make an adjustment on this little channel where the mesh is gonna sit. There's a space through here. That's gonna be for the LED light strip. But all this has to be kind of finalized before we get to there. We will have to pull these off again because we need to, oh, that's better, roll these flanges up for the sail panels to tie into. Aside from that, everything's looking good. A little bit of a dish there, we'll work that out. This little flange here, I'll get the dolly, roll that in a little bit tighter to match this side. And that's got to come up together like that. I don't bother doing the corners because it allows me the flexibility to make some adjustments. Okay, coming through. Okay, okay that's all lining up very well. Two and a half, and from our point at the front. Gonna check that curvature there. There's a bit of a right there. So now we get to take everything off again. I'll probably leave the roof in place, but undo these screws, take the quarters off, roll that flange up, and yeah, we don't need to go that far. We'll roll up half inch, three quarter inch flange, and then we'll take and join the sail panel to that. Later on, we'll minimize that flange, do a butt weld through here, but for now, we'll just leave the, the flange full length, put a couple screws in just to hold everything in place. I'll do some quick massage work up in there, get the roof sitting where it needs to. If you come back here, you can see that we have a bit of a high spot right there. If we step back, oh, I can't get back far enough, but it's looking pretty cool. Okay, enough standing around. Let's keep moving. Sunrise doesn't wait for anybody. This 
what I'm doing is I'm stretching this flange to restore that curvature. Uh, it's close. I might put it in the kick shrinker and just bring it up a little more. So as I mentioned, this flange is going to be left long at the moment. Later on, we'll cut it down to just within that radius, just above it, and bring the sail panel in, blend the two together. Right now, there's enough to get a couple screws in, hold the roof on to the quarters. Let's get the other quarter and do the same thing. Okay, so I went ahead and straightened out our line, used some three quarter inch tape, extended our flange distance here, and now we can cut off what we don't need. So when the tail lights come out, I'll be able to reach in from the end and smooth this out with this mounted in place. That way I can catch all the reflections, make sure they're all running right. Now, the trick with this side, we gotta snap it in. There we go. Boom, like a glove. That's good there. That's good there. See our wireframe buck has thickness in here, and that's what's keeping us up. It's actually rolling that up. As soon as we remove it, it'll all settle down. Let's get that corner pinned, and then we'll make these adjustments back here. But uh, all right. Do you guys want this? Nah. We're gonna take and remove the wireframe buck down to the shoulder line. That means removing that rod there, those through there as well as the one at the front here. That one's loose already. So we'll take and pull that out, screw everything back down, and start making our final adjustments. You see back here, this is not sitting at all where it should be. It's way too high. Like I said, that'll drop down, that'll drop in, and things will settle into place. I'm tempted to pull out the entire frame, wireframe on the driver's side. All right, guys, we've gone ahead and removed the wireframe buck. Okay, so we need to bend about there, the maximum apex. Pull it around there and leave that raw. So we need to stretch the top, shrink the bottom, stretch the top, shrink the bottom, bring it in. And we are also gonna give it a slight curve. We can make some final adjustments on the car too. I want to get it close. All right, there we are. The sweet spot has been reached. So we've got this piece in. Uh, I'm gonna clamp it there, put a tack, clamp it here, put a tack. The reason I'm not gonna weld it in permanent at this point is we need, we may need to uh, pull it out, make an adjustment for whatever reason later on. I don't want to trap myself. I might even finish the housings off the car, cut these tacks, pull the whole thing off. A little bit of nipping, tucking, and oh, <laughs> guess what? It fits and it's the right length. Now to just tap things into place. I think we're gonna get rid of this quarter because it's interfering, this top piece. And we'll get this in, bring the quarter in after we cut this rod away. Just eliminate it there, there. We no longer need it. It's served its purpose. All right, so we got the two end pieces in, center is in, all will join together, flowing quite well. Okay, let's blow it apart. You can see how the lines are shaping up. We've got a triangular pattern up into the roof. Everything's flowing, uh, except for back here. So let's get that rear section onto the back of this car. 
Now, for those of you who've been following this build, I'm sure you want to have some closure as well to see how this, this thing is shaping up. It's unfortunately raining outside, so we'll have to do it in here. Uh, a lot of times we roll them outside, as you've seen, stand way back. But with the snow, rain, all this crazy weather, uh, I'm not going to expose it in bare metal to those elements. Okay, roof section. It's a little loosey-goosey. Hopefully I can reach far enough over. Not bad. This line comes down the sail panel and then flows directly into that grill. When we go to fit this the final time, this quarter has to be blended into the top of the quarter. And like I mentioned, some of this material will be cut away and it'll be butt welded to the flange that we rolled up earlier. When she comes back, we get the roof on for the final time, then we'll go ahead and create all the structure on the inside. But I think I like that. Uh, a little higher. There. Okay, let's tack it. Okay, check that out. Now, this project leaving so soon is kind of bittersweet. You could almost say I'm bummed because I like to finish everything we're working on. But in this case, uh, there's a lot of work left inside to do. It's actually a good thing that we can remove the back, remove the roof, remove the front clamshell, and just have a bare bone cab and chassis. Okay, let's do some plenishing. Get this cleaned up a little bit. So we do have a bit of a dip in the roof. There we go. See the oil can popped out? That's because this flange is rolling. Once we get the structure developed, that'll take care of all that. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Yeah. The center is dipped a little bit, but that's because the flanges are kind of splayed out. So once that gets tucked in, that'll be okay. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, dash time. Let's dash to the finish. I was practicing that one. got these templates or template and profile that I bent up for the dash. This piece of cardboard is actually going to be the piece of metal that extends up from the windshield flange into the dash area and this dash, this profile is going to come in and it'll sit in a reveal that we create in this cardboard here so that we can uh, butt this in together like that. And this spine will also run into this piece. So let's get this made up first, and then we'll get some sheet metal out and probably bend it up as a whole section so it's a consistent, we don't have to match bends, and then we'll cut it in half and get it installed. And again, we'll probably do it on a few tacks just to kind of hold things in place temporarily, just to take a look. It'll all have to come out anyway for him to do all his stuff in here. This one's going to be tricky. I went ahead and I rolled this bottom flange. Maybe I should have done it after the fact, but I wanted to get this piece fitted and then create this offset after. So we have to kind of deal with this flange. I kind of trapped myself. Maybe. We need to make sure that this is deep enough to accept that spine and the dash. So I should get a, 
a dimension on that. Okay, so we're sitting at half an inch in thickness here. We'll add a little bit more, probably five eighths, because when you wrap it, uh, it'll take up some material. Yeah, if you're looking at this structure, we never got a chance to wrap that up. Uh, that's okay, because with this clamshell being here, we can just pull this structure out with everything tacked in place, maybe add a couple of support rods so nothing moves, take it out, finalize it, put it back in, and then when, it, when the clamshell comes back onto the body, everything should fit, see? fingers crossed. Gives ourselves five eighths of an inch. And there's our step for the dash panels to sit on. That's pretty. We'll get one more in the middle. Nailed. That's going to be, that's going to be good. Okay, armed with our profile here, that's going to be the top. Put that right there on top. And we have our marks. Really doesn't matter which way you bend it. This, this section through here is your face. This is the top of the dash. So there's our first bend. It's actually quite nice. The icrometer has been calibrated today. Check that out. All right. Now the other bend is a little more extreme. Now there's one more bend that has to happen and that's the very bottom. See how the bottom edge is all wavy? Can't have that. For that, we can use the brake. Now for the top, because we created that seat in the top of the dash, I want to um, plus half inch. This top edge, we need to roll that over in such a way that it connects with the top of the dash. We'll end up probably putting pins across the front. So you slide it in and put the fasteners in from the sides. And that way you have a nice clean top, no screws. There we have a very straightforward dash, literally straight. We'll cut it into two sections. The driver's side will have a whole area removed for the instrumentation cluster. So I'm creeping up on this dash panel a little bit at a time. And we're gonna take and cut away a little bit more. Hopefully it slides in at this point. This top surface, the bend is mating up perfectly with that front filler piece we put in. There we are, it's almost there. Cut away a little bit more. Look at that. Wunderbar. Fits perfectly. Almost as if it was made to fit. Without any structure, this thing's gonna keep moving up and down and around. I'm gonna put one tack on this. Maybe, yes, no. What if we left it like that? Now we gotta figure out the driver's side. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Um, there's too much stuff in the way. I have a way we can remedy that though. Couple bolts, drop the column, away we go. Hope it's not too short. No, it's perfect. Gonna take out the corner for the A pillar. That's gonna be it right there. 
Okay, so there we have the dash roughed in. The two sections, one on each side, the spine. There has to be a little more trimming done up above there to get all that to fit properly, the pins installed, all that stuff. That's as far as we're gonna take the interior. We'll throw a seat in here after we get those panels installed. And I think we'll drop her on the ground. I gotta find some wheels. All right, swing this out of the way. It basically accommodates the suspension, the push rod, and the tie rod. It's not gonna be part of the hood, it'll be part of the body because you don't wanna be unbolting your suspension every time you have to open your hood. And this will slide through that opening and bolt up to those two bolts there. Transfer that template onto a piece of sheet metal. And this is obviously grossly oversized, but that's done for a reason. Because once we start rolling flanges and everything, it'll become this size, which will fit into that opening. So we've got a double roll at the back, we're gonna have a double roll at the top to create an offset so you don't see into the engine compartment. There'll be a rubber seal. And then we need to roll a little flange along this edge here. Uh, this one will be done later and one across the front to engage with the sheet metal area there. The first couple bends we can do in the brake because they're straight lines. This obviously you have to do by hand as well as this one here because it comes up into a radius. I'm gonna put three tacks and just stick it to the hood just to fill that hole up. Back that off. Now this is gonna be tricky because I don't wanna bend this front area that goes down. Just the back one. Line that up and do something like this. And shoot, come on, a little bit more. Done. If we stuck this end in, we'd have a sharp bend to fix. Right now we just have a curl to fix, not a big deal. That'll straighten up. Okay, so there's no mystery behind rolling a flange. Basically just place your dolly on the other side of the line where you want the bend to happen. And with very light taps, roll it up. And you don't try to do the whole one spot at once. You just work your way up to it. And there we have it, nicely rolled flange, front flange, double flange at the top with the offset. One, two, tap that. Moment of truth, let's see how this fits. I won't roll this flange until later when I know the suspension, the a upper A-arm clears everything. It should be fine, but uh, I'm just gonna wait with that. As well as this top where I put this cut here, it's starting to spread a little bit. Not concerned about it now, but we will have to address that. Otherwise it will crack right through eventually. All right, let's see how this fits. I'm gonna go in behind like that. Come on, what's going on here? Oh, right there. And there we have it. It's gonna be a quarter inch gap through here for the seal. So we'll have to fine tune the top edge, get rid of this brace, uh, get a couple tacks on it, and then we can find some wheels, drop this on the ground. From drawing to reality.
Hope you enjoyed the video series on this little roadster. If you did, hit the like button, share with your friends, we'd really appreciate it. Until next time guys, thanks for watching and take care.